Good morning and welcome to the Lead Code tutorial. Today we're going to be solving problem 75, sort colors. The problem states, given an array with n objects colored red, white, or blue, sort them in place so that objects of the same colors are adjacent, with the colors in the order red, white, and blue. Here, we will use the integers 0, 1, and 2 to represent the colors red, white, and blue, respectively. You are not supposed to use the library sort function. We're given an example of the input, and you guys can see that the output of colors are adjacent to each other. Follow up. A rather straightforward solution is a two pass algorithm using counting sort. First, iterate the array counting the numbers of zeros, ones, and twos, then override the array with the total numbers of zeros, then ones, and followed by twos. Could you come up with a one pass algorithm using only constant space? So, yes, this is all possible. So, what do I want to do? First, I want to go ahead and give you guys a representation of how we can actually solve the problem using the counting sort, and then I will do so for the in-play solution as well. I think the key here is to see how I normally whiteboard these problems before I actually solve them so that the code is less complex and the logic for the problem is well thought out. So we're going to be using Sketchpad to pretty much illustrate how we're going to solve this problem. And I'm going to use the initial values, right? So our initial values are 2, 0, 2, 1, 1, 0. So how can we solve this problem? Well, the things that we know about this problem that we can use to our advantage. First, we know the range of colors. They're between 0 and 2. Next, we know what type of colors they are, right? So how can we represent these colors? Well, since there are only three different colors, we can represent them by their names. We can say, we can have a color red, we can have a white color, and we can have the blue colors, right? So we can just go ahead and create a for loop that goes over the colors array, and we could just increment that to figure out how many different colors there are. However, that approach would require us to create three different variables, right? And then we have to use maybe a if else statement and a sweet or a switch statement to use that to do the counting. Well, that makes our program a little bit bigger than where we would want it to be. So let's use the second advantage that we have, the number of colors. So why don't we use an array to simulate counting? Because that's probably one of the easier ways that we can do that using programming. So let's say that we go ahead and right, we have our max number is going to equal to two, right? And we want to keep track of how many um, colors we have. So what we can do is that we can create an array of max plus one for the size. So we're going to say size is going to equal max plus one. Right, and this is going to give us an array that looks something like this. It's going to be 0, 0, 0. Right, so this is going to handle the color 0 for the subscript. This is going to handle 1, and this is going to handle 2. Right, so we can use the subscripts, right, to actually um, increment the numbers of colors that we have and that's one thing that we have with arrays right that's the one advantage that we have so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to simulate um how we're going to process this all right so it's easier so the initial array that we have is going to be zero 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 so what we're going to do is that we're going to go over the first two right and this is going to be in the third position in the array all right, so remember the subscript starts from zero, but we start counting from one. So it's going to be in the third position. So we go over here and we have a zero for the uh, zero color. And we have a zero for the one color. And we have a zero for the two color, but we found a two color. So what we can do is that we can increment that, that zero. So we increment it by one because we found the first two. So this becomes one. All right, and we have the first array. Next, we go over the second number in the nums array, and it's zero. So for the zero spot, we have zero there for the first, uh, for the count. We've seen the first zero. So what we can do is that we could just increment the zero here 
and now we seen we have one and we don't have anything for the one color so we have zero and since we have one for that we just copy that over right so next we go over the two so we copy down one and we copy down zero and now we're at the two color so here we have a one so we could just increment that one and now we have a two right and then we go down again so now we found a we found a one right so we still have a zero in the zero color so we put a one down and now for the one color we have a zero so we can increment that zero and this is going to be one and for the two color we still have two so we're going to bring that down so next we're going to go again to the next one so for the zero color we still have just one and for the one color we have one here so we can increment that one more time now we have two and for the two color we have two so we can bring that down and now we are at the last zero so we have a one we can increment that since we found another zero color now this is going to be two two and two so our final array is this so two 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 for the color um, red, white, and blue, all right? So what we want to do is we want to iterate over this uh, colors, right? And then we want to go ahead and um, we want to go ahead and um, fill in the nums array. So this array right here is going to be the nums array. So we need two for loops for this. One to iterate over the first array, which is going to be the uh, count array. So I'm just call this one count, All right? Eventually we could change this to colors or something like that, it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, for i equal to zero and i is less than uh, the count array dot length right i plus plus and then we're going to go over the um uh, we're going to go over the uh the i the i count for the specific color so we're going to say uh for j right equal to zero and j is less than and they're going to use um count and you're gonna pass in i here. So this one, i here represents the number of colors that we have for that specific color. So we have two for uh, red, we have two for white, and we have two for blue, all right? So you're gonna do that, and then we're gonna say j plus plus, all right? So here, we have to go ahead and override this nums array. So what's the best way we can do this? Well, we can introduce an extra global variable and we can call that a global variable. We'll do a global. And um, this is going to be, um, I mean, this is gonna be a local variable because it's gonna be in the function. So let's make this local and just call it, it's gonna be called index for short, all right? So what we can do is we can go ahead and just say that nums all right, so nums, am I spelling this wrong? Nums, right, and then we pass in the index and we could uh, increment it. So increment the index, that's gonna equal to i. And this is pretty much it. We don't have to return anything because the function definition is actually void, right? And let me go ahead and explain this one more time for clarity. So we go over the counting as you've seen here. I think this is probably the best part of the video because it showed everything. And then what we need to do is, so we do the counting and then we have to go over the count. So if we have two uh, zeros, we have to make sure that there's two zeros up here in the front. And then if we have uh, two ones, we have to make sure that there's two ones appeared in the uh, third and fourth position. And then we have uh, two twos that appear in the fifth and sixth position all right so let's go ahead and look at a code example for this in java that will then clarify things i'll be right back all right 
So I've gone ahead and created a Java project. I've called the class sort colors rather than the solutions that's been given the only code. And I've still created main with the sample input. So what we need to do is we need to create an array, right? For the colors, to count the colors. So I'm just gonna call this one uh, int array, and call this one colors to the equal to new int array. And we need to pass in three because that's the amount of colors that we have. Next, we need to create that global, that local index. Just calling it global. We're gonna start it at zero. Initialize it zero. Now I'm gonna do the count. We're gonna say four. Uh, we can use the for each loop. So we're gonna say for. Uh, let's call this one. Uh, call it value for value, or we could say for color. Makes sense for color in uh, nums. What we want to do is that we want to go ahead and say. Uh, colors right and then we're gonna pass in color and then we're gonna increment that so all we're doing is that we're just incrementing the subscript for the specific color right next what we want to do is we actually want to iterate over those uh, colors and then we want to uh, fill in the nums array so we're gonna say for int i is gonna equal to zero and i is less than colors right um dot length i plus plus next we create another for loop we're gonna say for uh int j is gonna equal to zero and then j is less than the color count so i was gonna say colors dot i and then we're gonna do uh, j plus plus now we just have to overwrite that nums array. So we're gonna say nums, and then we're gonna pass in that index and we could just uh, increment that. All right, so all this is gonna do is that it's gonna say, it's gonna increment after we've uh, put in the value here. So we're gonna say, put that value i. So i is gonna represent the number of zeros that we have to put in the nums, all right? So we have two zeros, so j um, colors dot uh, I here is going to be two. All right. So J is going to loop two times and then it goes over to um, the second color one is going to loop two times and then go over the third color and it's going to loop two times. So eventually we have the total number of six colors and uh, here we have total number of six colors. So that makes sense that the, in that the uh, index is going to go all the way to five. All right. So it's going to start from zero, one, two, three, four, five. Right, that's why we made it a local and had it up. So we're done with this. However, we can't really see the answer for this solution because it's a void function. So what I'm going to do here is just add this uh, extra line of code here. This is not going to be something you're going to add on the code. They have a different way of handling um, looking at the array. Right. So I'm going to do a system to out of print line. And then I want to use the arrays uh, class. This is going to be part of the Java the util package and the two string method and pass in nums here, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to then go ahead and just call the sort um, colors and pass in nums, right? And everything looks good. So we can go ahead and run this and we should get all the colors adjacent to one another and this is it um if you guys want me to keep on whiteboarding the problems like i do personally for myself um i would do so sometimes it depends on the problem because some problems are really complex and whiteboarding it might take some time so if you guys don't really mind me taking more than 20 minutes per problem maybe like 10 minutes to whiteboard it 10 minutes to provide alternate solutions um because typically when I make these problems, I solve them in multiple languages. And um, for some reason, Java and C++ are the ones that always give me the best runtime, right? Um, however, since Java code and C++ code kind of almost look the same, I will provide the solutions in Java and Python, right? Uh, I like Python because it's you can do a lot of cool things in there without um, having to make your code a little bit way too huge. Um, anyway, if you guys like the problem, please give me a thumb up. If you guys like the solution, please give me a thumb up. I'm gonna come up with a second part solution where we go 
uh, and look at the in-play solution. And I'm going to whiteboard that as well. All right. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.